This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, and at those tapings uh, in San Jose, you take on Razor Ramon and you lose when one, two, three kid attacks Razor for the DQ. Um, kid's weapon of choice for this attack, you might ask. <laughs> Baby stroller. Of course. This is old school Memphis, is it not? Well, it, it, before you did research, do you even remember them? turning one, two, three kid heel on, on his mentor. Yes. See that I kind of, of course I remembered it when I refreshed my brain, but I'm like, oh yeah, they did try that. That didn't quite work <laughs> again. Transition identity issues going on. Is the there middle. any wonder that Scott Hall is receptive to a WCW offer more money, less dates and no baby strollers. Bingo. Ahmed makes the save from you guys, double teaming him. Uh, do you just assume at this point, well, they're probably going to set up some, some tag matches. Like yeah. it, it, it feels that way to me it, for sure. And I was look, so I came back, they announced it in November ish. I did the interview in December with Ahmed, I think in the King. And that was a stutter start and they introduced Manny and that was a whole debacle but I got to roll rumble and I was hoping uh, win, lose or draw that our pay, that our program would be over, but it wasn't, we had the non-finish. And then the following night, we're still sort of my dance partner, or at least in the dance circle is Ahmed. I could remember going, okay, now we're going to do some tags. You know, I was kind of married to Ahmed during this time. So then we, uh, we wind up seeing you be at a taping where Ahmed Johnson beats one, two, three, uh, kid by DQ, but it's with your interference. You come to ringside attempt to come off the top rope with a guitar shot, but Ahmed catches you razor comes back in for the save and kid winds up breaking your guitar over razors back. This is an interesting little, I don't know the way we tie everybody together. Do you remember it ever even being discussed that maybe Ted DiBiase might be with you because and I only asked because he was managing kid at the time. Yeah. I mean, it was again, and, and not far from this is, or is it going on right now that he's managing Steve is, is, uh, yes. Ringmaster. Yeah. I mean, so Teddy was the, um, you know, the, the, uh, Hulkamania area, the golden years era, era, um, the million dollar man. And now he was managing folks. So it, at least, uh, yes. I mean, the, it I think Teddy probably accompanied, in tag matches us to the ring a couple of times, but yes, but it, nothing that he was going to be put specifically with me. No. So let's talk about white plains, Baltimore and MSG. You're going to work all three putting Ahmed over and this time in MSG is going to be your last visit here until June of 98. Uh, where are you at in your head? Are you thinking you're on borrowed time? And I mean, are you enjoying this or do you just think I just got to ride this contract out? No, I, I mean, again, I, so July 95, me and road dog walk out, you know, I had some reset retime and got my head in the game back in the game and took a little, uh, I, I guess to, I, I really a reset, but I was in the gym like crazy. Um, I, I, you know, again, pre kids and did a little USWA stuff, but there was no doubt in my mind that the, you know, the territories. I don't want to say that I said they were dead, but I wanted to make money. I mean, I'm a mid I'm, I'm a mid twenties and I'd done seven years in the territory. I wanted to make some money and look, I love being on Madison square garden or the Baltimore arena or Fitchburg mass in, in good houses, maybe not those Canadian runs, but I mean, I, I, I loved it and loved the money coming in, but I'd be sitting here lying my ass off. I didn't tell you, I wanted to move up that card. I was, I guess you could say fully expecting to move up that card. Uh, I knew that there was a, like I said, there was a, there was a time there during this time, Conrad, I'd left and maybe you could say I was a top heel or a number two heel, whatever, but the, in your house too, I left in a hell of a spot. I yeah. wanted to get back there 
as quick as I possibly could and bust my ass because I just felt I was ready to get back to sea level and then blast through that. That was my mindset during this, uh, we'll call it uh, early spring of 96. I was, I could not wait. I really wanted it to take off. So you're announced as taking on Ahmed at the Louisville gardens for the next in your house, but the match is dropped quietly from the card. And instead it's replaced by Hunter and Duke Drose. Boy, this is not a good sign. Uh, how'd you hear that news? I don't even remember hearing it. And, and I probably look, I, I wish I had like exact recall, but I believe we ought to ask Bruce one day, he may have a little uh recall on this i believe that the agent reports kept coming in night after night and whether it was jack lancer or chief j strongbow or whoever would say something to the effect double j you're trying but it is what it is and i have a feeling that the agent reports got back to vince bruce and pat and they're like hey we did the royal rumble match but um let's not take this match to pay-per-view again that's what I recall, and I would be relieved at that, that it's better. Don't go to that well. It's not going to do Ahmed any good, not do me any good. So you're still working with Ahmed when you visit Happy Valley in Penn State. Um, Ahmed has in his corner that night Kevin Conlon, uh, an all-time or a, a, an all-Big Ten lineman at the time, and he's working against you here. And I guess these are the little things that at the time the WWF didn't really get a lot of credit for, but that's probably something that you took note of with your future promoter hat, right? Well, early, early, maybe even before I broke in Jerry Lawler and actually my grandmother would be one of the lessons that they would get a local coach or, or a local politician. The mayor's going to be, you know, special guest referee, but he'd be on the floor and you'd have a rev, you know, it's, it's smoke and mirrors and, and added attractions and something to tie to the local audience that you go, Oh, I didn't know I was going to get to see this. There's the guy that I see at the grocery store, or the gas station every day. And so these kind of little promotions, they have always worked in the promotional game. I mean, still in Nashville today, you'll hear a big headline or country music artist come to town and oh my gosh, they had, this as a special guest and it's some, um, whatever it is, those kind of little tricks it's given the audience what they expect to see, and then a little something extra. It works. So there we're working with Ahmed uh, at the Spectrum in Philly. Uh, at the same time, though, you're working for the USWA. And this is interesting because, boy, wrestling's fun. You're a heel here mm. in the World Wrestling Federation working with super over baby face Ahmed Johnson in big markets, Madison Square Garden, Philadelphia, but back home, you're working for the USWA and you're a baby face. Is that challenging? I mean, it does feel like we're, we're, we're hitting the audience. And again, I realize it's just one part of the country, but when they watch the big TV show, you're a bad guy. They watch the local TV show. You're a good guy. And you're having to sort of go back and forth. Is that, a, that feels like it could be like riding with your left hand at times. It just didn't. I mean look, we're actors, actresses, it, it, you know, it is what it is, but it, I, I still think wrestling is that unique form of, uh, of entertainment. It just, it didn't resonate, but again, my father and Vince had the relationship. Tennessee was, I guess at this point, the last territory that was still running weekly towns and weekly TV and the whole Texas thing that we've covered had long been over and it was Memphis, Louisville and Evansville and Nashville and still trying to make it work and develop talent. But by this time, like you just said, I was back on the road full time. Yeah. Kind of the last thing I wanted to do was on my quote unquote days off, go work for the family promotion but for, you had little, to, yeah. for little to no money. Yes, I did. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're going to notice any time we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.